Yeah, I'm Chuck Liddell. You're watching Icebreakers. Watching Icebreakers. My name's Adam Ray. I'm on the show, too. Try to catch the ball. Ah! Fuck! <laughs> Welcome back to Icebreakers, episode two, Adam Ray, Chuck Liddell. There it is. Fucking, I got to get, so you've always had that locked and loaded, the cool, yeah, I got like, I did the white guy come, double oh, thumbs up. Well, where did that come from? I'm like, look, I, I, Hawaiian Kempo, that's how, what I train, that's how we train. Yeah. yeah that's my, my train, that's where it came from. So I started doing it a long time ago. Doing this? Yeah. Yeah. That's from. It's a, isn't there a story you know, behind but, it? But, but honestly, no, I'm not really. The only thing is, it's always awkward. Like when you take, like you put a fist up, and I always felt weird putting a fist up when I'm taking a picture with someone. Like, <laughs> yeah. Now, if you put a fist up, I will. But if you don't, like I'm like, what do I do? Like what do I do with my hand? Or put it back here. Or yeah. Oh, trust so me. I just started, you know, that, this was easy because I, you know, I, Hawaiian Kempo, like, and then we started doing this. Which yeah. Was, this was uh, one of the kids of the thing, Hawaiian uh, uh, Kempo fist. Yeah. It's why I can't believe that it was from one of the kids at, at, at John's school. Uh, John Hackerman's uh, school came up with that, and we started. Oh, wow. I, I, and that that became the thing after we do, do after our fights. That, That's awesome. Uh, it was just a tribute to our, our style and, and our, our, our gym. Yeah, I'm gonna start having to try to pull those into my pictures because I'm just like I do like the standard this, then I do like that, then I'm doing like eh, like just fucking classic comedy, like you know, fucking point, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's fucking great. You made that look way cooler than what I do. Chuck, I don't know if you've Googled yourself recently, but when you Google Chuck, there's five famous Chucks that pop up, and you're a part of them. And I want to hear if you can guess who you think the other four Chucks are that are in the top five Chucks of all time. I don't know if I could guess that. Okay. Chuck Norris? Chuck Norris is there, obviously. Uh, Chuck Taylor, the uh, old basketball player and uh, shoe salesman, yeah. famous for the Chuck, Chuck Taylors. Taylors. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Chuck um, Berry. Chuck Berry, yeah. That's a good one. Johnny, the singer of Johnny yeah, Be oh, Good yeah. and My Dingaling. Um, and, a, you know, and a historic Why performer. you always got to talk about your dingaling? I do because, man, I'm... T- <laughs> what if that was my thing every episode? I'm just like, look, man, it's five and a half inches hard. And it's like, some, for some people, that's too much. Um, uh that's too and, much information, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Way too much yeah, information. Yeah. Uh, and then Chuck Liddell, obviously, in there. And here's what I want to know. Uh, why? Where would you put Chuck E. Cheese? Would you put him in the top 10 if we were to finish out uh, five more spots? Or would you say Chuck E. Cheese is in, like, the top 100 of famous Chucks? Oh, uh, Chuck E. Cheese got to be in the top 10. Right? Got to be, right? Got to be there. Yeah, okay. Definitely. Yeah. Have you been to a Chuck E. Cheese yes. recently? Not too long ago, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was a kid's birthday party. Wow. They're still rocking, yeah? Yeah, I still go, man. You got to go with, and I love that you said it was for a kid's birthday party. And a, you were there with kids, right? Yeah, I was there with my kids, yeah. yes. Hey, not not speaking from personal experience, but if you are trying to go, uh, make sure you're there with kids, you know? If you're going solo as an adult male, probably not the move. Probably not. Yeah, yeah nobody's no. just walk in as a dude being like, I hear they got great pizza. Hey, hey man, that's what pedophiles say. Yeah. The pizza's not very good. <laughs> yeah, it's not. <laughs> Because you know what they they have the animatronic show as the backdrop. They try to distract you from what you put in your hey, mouth. Hey man, it's all good. I love it though. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And the fact that it's been around for like fifty years and still, still, uh, still rocking is incredible. I'm trying to think of that movie that had the Chuck E. Cheese in it. Um, what movie was it? Was it a comedy? Yeah, oh, it's it was funny. Uh, that's, that's the line with Kirk I'll think of it. What is real quick? What is your favorite movie quote? Do you have one? I do not have a favorite movie quote. No, I, I quote movies all the time. You do? Yeah. Give me, give me one that you that's in your rotation, with your kids, or if you, you know, is it like Dumb and Dumber, like you know, your pumpkin pie haircutted freak? Do you do like the Yeah Baby? Were you a Borat? Fucking no, not at all. Yeah, um, not a Borat. No, not at all. Um, I, you know, like Tommy Boy is probably the most, something from Tommy Boy. Oh, man, dude, something, something from Tommy Boy. On. My my daughter, my oldest daughter, loves whenever it. Whenever I say a quote, no, whenever I say a quote. She'll say Tommy Boy because, like, cause she can't guess what code. She they has no idea. She, she'll say, I'll say, what, tell me what code that what movie that's from. She'll be like, Tommy Boy? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, it's always like, Whoa. hey, you did something from, uh, okay, Tommy Boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, Tommy Boy is so good when he opens a door. What'd you do? I, I mean, probably, I probably the one that I use the most, probably, though, I, if I had to pick one, would be probably really quick. What are you wearing? Really quick. What are you wearing? Yeah. That's, Think from, about well, what, what movie? Uh, True Lies. S- Starsky and Hutch. Oh man, 
classic, dude. <laughs> when he's like, I don't know, like, uh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> Two dragons. <laughs> that's yeah, amazing. That would be the follow up. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good I, one. Because I and I the funny thing like I said, my friend, like I, I get my buddies to, to get them with it sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, it's good. I'd probably have to go Dumb and Dumber across the board is one of my favorite movies of all time. So quotes, I mean, just you know, I I like when we were talking about those are your like, skis. Yeah. yeah, both of them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Yeah, see, get you. Liar, liar is my favorite movie. Come liar. on. It, is it really? Yeah. I love that you said that, dude. Liar, liar. That says liar. a lot about, dude, I love that you said that. Because that movie is <laughs> fucking unreal. And guess what? Only Jim Carrey could have done that. Um, you know what I'm saying? When he's yeah. in the bathroom in the court and he, be, and he comes out and the guy goes, what are you doing, man? He goes, I'm, I'm kicking, kicking my, my own ass. ass. <laughs> Dude, I'm oh, uh, I mean, You know what? He came up to me, um, Jim Carrey, yeah, at, at a at a umami burger opening thing. Oh, like he was man. there, and like my wife goes, "Hey, hey, I think he's trying to meet you." Like I'm like, "Oh shit, yeah, hey, how you doing?" Like, she was so mad. She, my wife is a huge Jim Carrey fan. Like I so am I, but I mean, but, but like her even more. And she's totally. like. Like he's trying, like he was trying to get your attention for like ten minutes. Like, what the fuck? Oh, like, what is man. wrong with you? Like, I, I didn't notice. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a huge. I'm, you know, I'm not looking for movie stars in Umami Burger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't expecting him to be here. Like, like what did he say? I just said I talked a little bit about normal stuff. Like, I don't know, but it, Dude, it was cool. Like, that was awesome. Crazy. That, that's one of those things. Like, I, I really like that. That's one of them. That was cool meeting him because he's awesome. He's unreal. He's yeah. a he's one of the goats for sure. Funny thing, like transitions in conversation sometimes. Oh like, yeah, because like I'll get to the point where like I'm done with the story and people like are still trying to trying to listen and I'm going, um, <laughs> hey guys, I don't know where else to go from <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that, I thought that was an end. I, mean, I, <laughs> I thought it was. I, pretty, it was, I thought it was pretty clear. Yeah. It was over <laughs> uh, when I said it, and then I kicked his ass. I thought that was kind of the the finish. Yeah, uh, uh, when I said that, yeah, and then he knocked out and. <laughs> And then we went home. The and, and, I, went home. <laughs> and I went home. <laughs> that went seems bed. like a good place to be the end of the story. Yeah, you're an asshole if you're like, I went home, went to bed, and then uh, that was it. And then you go, and then what happened? You're like, what the, what? <laughs> While I was dreaming? Oh, I don't know. I was uh, dreaming about hopefully this moment not happening <laughs> and seeing you at the barbecue. Yeah. Uh, how often do you, by the way, get, um, we haven't talked about this yet, just straight up, you know, dude bros. We've talked about your types of fans, but guys at places where you're like, I truly just want to be a person, whether it's a dinner or like, yeah, let's say like a barbecue where you know most of the people, but even there's always going to be a couple guys that have one too many Coors Lights and well, they fake he, headbutt you. Oh, uh, well, okay. The guy, honestly, I, I don't mind it. Like, yeah. you know, it's one of those things. Like I, we were at a Super Bowl party and I think it was uh, um, Ludacris's like I think it was his uh Fear Factor's ludicrous. Yeah, but it was his um it was his like personal trainer. Whoa. Was there and he's like really excited to see me and yeah. he kept smacking me oh. on the back like, hey Chuck, I oh. but he was just overexcited yes. and, like, and a little drunk. A little and, drunk. You know, and he kept hey, you okay. <laughs> like Chuck, you all right? Oh, like, was, like he was he's like, I, I said, is this I'm like, he's fine. Yeah. Like like or like I, we were at um we were at Charlie Sheen's house. Whoa. And we had a barbecue at his house. We're at his house and he's talking to me and my wife and, and telling the story and having being fun. And he's grabbing her and grabbing me and grabbing and his security guy's sitting there going like like he's a uh a really ex Israeli special force guy, I think. Oh, but wow. but like his but his like his security guy's sitting there looking at me like oh, like I'm I'm like it's fine. He's like, dude, if, if Charlie says like target blood or winning one more time, then we'll step in. No, Did he no. say it? Was um, this at the no, time when no, he was? No, he wasn't saying stuff like that. But he, no, he was great. We were having a good time. He was just excited and and, and like Chuck having Linnell. a good time. Holy shit, Chuck Liddell. Let's fucking Chuck Liddell. Yeah. But he was, he was a guy. And I, you know, it was one of those things. Like I, we, we were there because uh, I gave my buddy I gave my buddy shit because I'm like, he, he always calls me. He's got these celebrity with him. wants me to come down and hang out. Yeah. I'm like, 
I don't care. Like, why are you calling me for you that? Don't. I don't. I, I'd rather come hang out with you. Like, if, cool. if you want, want me to come down, ask me to see you. Yeah. But then, he, then, I, and then I saw the thing he posted. He was with Charlie Sheen. Like, all, all the guys you're out with, you can call me. But you're out with Charlie Sheen, you don't fucking call me. Yeah, yeah, I'm that, like, what, what's your problem? I want. I want and he's like, well, he's having a barbecue. You want to come to a barbecue tomorrow? Like, I'm like, yes, yes, yes we do, we yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we were there. I get him there, and it was, it was, a, it was a blast. It was fun. Charlie Sheen <laughs> is another guy that's probably got stories. Oh, for was, days. Do you think we were, could ever get him on? I, I'll try. That would be fucking. I'll be, I'll I mean, you know, he, I'll ask. I mean, I'll, I'll, I, that's I, all we can do. I text him every once in a while. He still responds. Says hi. Awesome. Or whatever. That's huge. Awesome, that's so. hey. That's a win. <laughs> that's a guy, by the way, that you go as far as the prime of true Hollywood. You know, like there's errors. You've got like. The 50s and 60s when things were kind of getting going and then you, you know, breaking out of black and white to color and then the the Doris Day days and then fucking Marilyn Monroe. And then you get into this, you know, Robert Downey Jr., Charlie Sheen, fucking, uh, I mean, who else would consider like the guys that were just crushing it on and off stage, right? That just right. were, t- I mean, with with partying and girls and, and movies, being a, mo- being a true movie star yeah. when there wasn't, you know, paparazzi you had magazine shots. You didn't have people catching videos. I've talked to athletes um, or basketball players about this now, too. They're like, man, thank God when I played in the 90s that there were no like, oh, cell phones. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, trust me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, trust yeah. me, I I'm, was I'm glad. I mean, Vegas is, is not the same as it was back when they didn't have it wasn't. everyone videotaping and taking pictures. And man, we had a good time. You're so glad you skipped that boat, huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm so, I mean, I didn't get social media until 2009. I met my wife. Like the same about the same time, and so I really never did any, did, did any wow. of that stuff. Like it was like <laughs> never dealt with any of that. Like I'm that's uh, you know no thanks. Uh, I never had to deal with all that craziness. But you know back then like I, no no I did had some wild you were yes. some wild times. Like yeah. I mean I mean I'm sure people got video of me in New Mexico pulling down a stripper pole in my underwear. Good like, for you. Too. And, and, and by but, the way, that's harmless. But back, but back then you know you know back then you know people take pictures whatever. Then they show it to a few of their friends, and that's it. That's a wrap. Yeah, it's a wrap. Now it would be on. And with the group, get their phones out because they need, they know that they can get famous doing it. That yeah. maybe they get or get some cash. Yeah, get some cash from. They can get someone to pay them for to, yeah. to sell that. So like they pull it out and they're doing all this stuff, and it's like I was so just so glad uh, that, that you didn't that have would, to worry about. To worry about. It. And then yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't know that that would have done anything bad for me because I was single and I, yeah. I was single and I wasn't didn't have a squeaky clean reputation. Yeah. Like I just had a guy that liked to fight and liked to like uh, like to go out and have a good time. That's what I want to say. So, also, who's gonna be like, hey, you know, uh, a, a professional UFC fighter is on stripper pole drunk. In his underwear, like that headline doesn't make sense. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, who's gonna go? Jesus Christ! This guy's got to get his act together. Like, I can't believe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, exactly. it all adds up. It's like, you know. Well, it sounds about I, like that. Be more shocked. Hey, my, hey, my friend, my mom, my mom would go, ah, yeah, it sounds like my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. <laughs> It'd be more crazy if it was like UFC fighters caught like you know, stealing cookies from fat kids and giving them to old ladies. People will be like, dude, what's this guy? Get back on the stripper pole, Chuck. This is not like you. You know, you're doing stuff out of character. Uh, d- did you ever have superstitions going into matches or are you superstitious in general? Not really, no. Yeah, me neither. No, I never had that going. There's no, like, like, I mean, I have simple stuff. Like, I always had to make sure I did everything. I like To me, I had to train and get ready and prepare. Yeah. So I'm walking the ring like with no excuses, right? You know, and so I can go in there and, and do my best. Um, but other than that, not really. Like if I've, I'm in shape, like if I did this, I didn't do that. It's not gonna like, oh no, I didn't do this. Or, right. oh, oh, I forgot my lucky rabbit's foot. Or, or, do that. No, I get it. I mean, some people have it. You know, some people I'll do this and I'll do that, or they have. You know, I think baseball does that a lot too. Totally. Like streaks. Say, oh, I'm gonna do this though. The streak ends. Let my okay. beard grow, or let my pubes <laughs> fucking dye them. You know, white or whatever. But it's uh. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's a, I've never truly, I did it in high school basketball where it was like, you know, well, wearing a lucky wristband or, um, well, and I, I think if you believe it, it can make a difference. But I think the problem with that is it only will make a difference when you don't have it. Right. <laughs> you know, like right. it's not going to make a positive, oh, I brought my lucky rabbits, but I'm going to be better. Yeah. It's going to be, oh, no, I forgot it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, if you're doing less work, but putting more stake in the superstition, it's like, you know, it's yeah. like, all right, well, I missed a couple of practices, but fucking, I got my lucky, you know, cock ring or whatever. Um, <laughs> just me. Uh, is uh, 
you know, we talked, we've talked a lot about like the destinations of um, new uh, places for matches to take place. And you said Vegas in the uh, heyday was bonkers. Are there places that you travel to uh, now or have traveled to that you consider like, you know, you're like that you could retire to? Because even during COVID, a lot of people were picking up and moving. I know quite a few uh, buddies from Seattle that just said, fuck it, let's get out before it gets too crazy and go to New Mexico or go to Utah, go to places yeah. that were kind of, are there places that you could see yourself living in not, uh, that's not Los Angeles? Um, sh- sure. I Later mean, in I, life, I'm like, like any, any time. I, I'm, I'm good anywhere. Like I, like I got my family with me. I'm, I'm good. There's different places that we looked at different places where we liked it. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I, but my wife looked at a place in Texas we liked. Um, you know, okay, it was the first time she mentioned maybe maybe thinking about looking somewhere else. She never wanted to leave here. She's yeah. from Huntington. Um, but we looked at a place in Huntington, you know, maybe Don't going down there and being closer to the beach. Because we did stay down there for two months during COVID. And we, we really enjoyed being that close to the beach. Because I, I grew up in Santa Barbara. and I, Dude, Right near know, the water, and, and always. I just always, always there. And and we, we both we both liked that. And I, I mean, I thought, hey, I don't mind moving down there if you want to, want to do that. But, yeah. um, but it, it's... It, you know, and I, I don't mind Texas. The place she was looking at was, you know, 10 minutes from DFW, which for me, for travel, and I get travel for business a lot. So that makes it a quicker trip in and out. Wow. You know, because I, I used to travel always with all my, with my family. My yeah. whole family comes with me. But now that it's getting a little older, it's a little harder. Although the homeschool thing is kind of helping up with that. They, they just come bring the school with us. Yeah. So now they can Zoom school anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, but... um but they're gonna they'll get back in school, and so when I travel, that make it easy because it's an easy. But you know, everything's got its plus and minuses. You know, totally. it's, it's, I mean, obviously, the cost of living there has been cheaper. Um, but we, we we like being in California. We it like rules, we, we like we like we like the weather. We like yeah, like dude. the people. We've been here for a long time. We like our neighborhood. We love our neighborhood. That we, helps we a live, lot. We live in, we live in Hidden Hills, and we love our neighborhood. Really, you know, got I got some great shitty neighbors. ass neighbors. Maybe we can trade at some point, just to fucking can try do a little neighbor swap. That. You've heard of wife swap? Let's get neighbor swap going. We got neighbors that are just like the p- parties are through the roof. I mean, we're in a condo in Hollywood, and it's like the building is is great, but there's there was a meth head living on the second floor for a while that was like allowing a lot of like uh, creepers and tweakers to like slip in, and they were stealing packages and stuff. So that put a damper on the whole living experience. But getting to know neighbors is a whole art form in and of itself like especially for in the condo it's like you're meeting people in the elevator that's where you're kind of seeing oh you're i haven't like you're a you're not a recurring character on this show called we live here like so i haven't seen you before so what's and it's on you i feel like or the neighbor who do you think it's on to i think it's on you it's on you introduce yourself like i if you're new we actually we as a new one town they just bought a house two two houses up from us yeah and they just came by they they put a thing out in the local the facebook Thing my wife's in. I yeah, don't know. I don't. I, 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 I wouldn't know. You're like but, I but, just got an email address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just they um, but you know they 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 came by and I, we talked and I you know, met met everybody. The kid, their kids came by, played with our kids. They got and a they couple got kids along, the right? same age. They got along. You know, it was great. You know, and that's a great way to do it. You know, they and they they just put it out there so people. Hey, we just bought this house. You know, you know, we would like to meet some neighbors and we got. You know, a seven year old, a nine year old. Yeah. And they, I have a seven year old, nine year old. Yeah. You know, so it was, they Perfect. came by and they had a blast. They played, played, had a blast. And that's a great way to do it. We had, when we first moved in, we had a, we had a birthday party like, uh, like right after, right? Cause my, my, we had a birthday party, or a party right after. And was the, next, a the next, I don't remember. We just got bounce out of there. Yeah. We, but next, next, and uh, our next door neighbor, like, the, cause we didn't invite him. Which maybe we should have. I don't know. I don't know how that works. But we didn't know them. Like, yeah. I didn't, like for me, I didn't think you'd want to come to one of my kids' parties. Like, yeah. Like you don't even know us. Wait, like, does this guy have kids, or is he by no, himself? No, no, no. It was uh, him and his wife, I think. But, okay. but they're and I think they have kids, but they're grown and they're older. Than that, but they got they got offended that we didn't invite them to our party, so they were oh. mad at us for years. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, dude, like, dude, hey, invite, Fuck come you. by. Hey, if I'm having a party, knock on the door. I'll invite yeah, you in. Take initiative. Like, I, I just come over and say, hey, man, I, hey, I, I see you're having a party. Can we come in? Sure, come on in. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like, that's easy, that is your neighbor, or, that's the or, or just, or even just say, hey, hey, you know, I, I saw you had a party the other day. You know, I'm, you know, I, we, we would have loved to come by. Like, say something. Just come over and say yeah. something. We, I'll, I'll squash it. I'm not, I'm not, not. I don't dislike you. Totally. I just don't know you. I just, or, I moved in. <laughs> 
two months ago, we still haven't met you. I know. <laughs> That's such a fucking bitch move to get and, upset. And, and that the thing when... is, like, I, I could see if they wanted me to go, if it was an, an adult party. Yeah. But, but it was... It was, a kid party. Uh, it was a kid party. He goes, look, I saw that bouncy house through the window, and I'm I mean, I think, I think, still pissed. I, think, I, think, I don't remember if she was 10 or she's turning 10 or whatever. My, my, it's my, my yeah. older daughter. But it was like, I'm like, no, uh, that's, like, that's, bro, like. <laughs> yeah, that's, to get upset, it's like, hey, man, I know you don't even know me, but like at least assume that from seeing me through my window that I'm a good guy and that would, I would enjoy a oh, bouncy house oh, yeah. and a buffet. And then, they, then they called, then they, uh, they, and they called the, Animal practice service on us saying our dogs were because our dogs are barking at their dogs because we have a we put in a dog run by the also by the house. what dogs do go uh, on well I had because I had a chihuahua and a, and a bulldog but we have coyotes right so I made this big dog run it, it's bigger than this room like it's it's a big dog run like for the for the dogs and when we leave I put them in there if yeah. they're, they're going to be outside and and the, the funny thing is the, is the guy came by the animal. Mm-hmm services guy because they he reported us Jesus. came by and he looked at it he saw actually it looked like a very nice um nice <laughs> uh, equipment there because yeah. we had like one of those igloo like oh yeah like uh things for the dogs yeah. to sit in and it looked like a really nice setup over there and um but uh he's like in the bouncy the, house was the shit i, I, I would be bummed <laughs> if i didn't get invited <laughs> to this party <laughs> yeah. yeah but he's like but your um but your dog tags don't count for here because they were from where I lived before, because we just moved there. Oh yeah, not long before. Yeah, yeah. So I, I didn't know you had to. I actually didn't know you had to change to the county you're in. Right. I think from a different county. Right. But I had they had dog tags. They were just from San Luis Obispo County. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So many things. So I basically had to. So basically, I got got a fix a ticket for for not not having tags on my dogs. So my, so my far, <laughs> I'm like I'm like, and by the way. The only reason they're barking is because your dog is barking at them. Like they're not just over there barking. Your dog comes up to their comes up to your fence next to my fence and barks at my dogs. My dogs bark back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, get your dog away from my fence. Yeah, they'll stop barking. You started it. It's like I was in an elevator once and I had a mustache for a, an acting job, right? And I didn't realize the true power of the stash and how it can really create some awkward situations. I'm in this elevator. There's a little fat kid with his uh, dad and mom and he's looking up at me, staring at me. So I look down at him and I go, hey buddy, I go, cool hat, you like the Dodgers? And the dad hears me and just pulls his kid away. He looks at my mustache, looks at me and it was just like fucking creepo talking to my kid in an elevator. And I wanted to look at the dad and be like, hey man, he was flirting with me. Like I didn't start this shit. He was, lo- the little kid was looking at me like I was a bean burrito machine. And so, so it's always like, it's on the guy who uh, like he needs to take responsibility. And also, you're 0 for 2 as a neighbor. If you are upset that you didn't get invited to a kid's party and then you call pet services, hey, dude, you're making it real tough for me to want to meet you halfway and get a friendship going at any point. Right. Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like, this guy was doomed from the get-go. Yeah. What are your dog's names? What? What are your oh, dog's names? That was my, old, 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 my new ones or my yeah. old ones? Well, both. Well, we got Parzival and we have... Uh, Parzival? Yeah. What does that mean? Teddy and Parzival. Well, it's from Ready Player One. The kids were watching oh, watched that movie right great. before we got the dog. Very cool. And then they they actually it was funny. They they no one could decide on the name, so they wrote a bunch of different names. Did you make on. it a family decision? Or let it the was kids a family do it? decision. Yeah. But they put everybody put names on little tags. Right. And the dog that we had the dog for a little bit and it like to tear up paper, right? But you had to chime in because if the kids were like, "Hey, how about Tito and Randy?" You'd be like, "Fuck off! Let's no. try, look, look, let's explore other options." Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but we so we wrote down all the names that were acceptable. Okay, and I, I think they, my my daughter and my wife tried. My older daughter and my wife tried to pull parts of all. They, they, but the other kids were really set on having that in. So we said, fine. It's it's one of ten names I think on papers. And yeah, we, we crumble it. We throw them all out on the floor and see which one he grabbed. The first one he grabbed was what the name his name was. That's awesome. And, and he grabbed parts of all. <laughs> no, I was like, um, can we change? No, 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 the kids are like, <laughs> my little kids are like, no, 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 we won, we win, we get, we get parts of them. The kids were and so like, pumped. And, um, and they're like, uh, can we change? They tried to change it for a little, for about a week. But yeah. It, it didn't happen. So he's Parsi. Well, he's Parsi. Yeah, like now. Yeah. It's a very unique name. Te- Teddy is our other one. He's, yeah, it's a, one's a um, miniature Australian Shepherd. Oh, and wow. one's a miniature uh, uh, Poodle. And we uh, travel a lot, so that's why we have two miniature dogs now. Totally. Right. It's the best. We have a 10-pound cavapoo uh, named Pickles, and yeah. she's the shit. I mean, just full of love, wants to make friends with everybody. It is weird, though, because like some – you think with miniature dogs, especially that's of a poodle breed, you're like, oh, cool. All love, all friendly, is never going to attack anybody. And if they do, it's going to be with kisses and licks. 
there are these two kids walking on my street and with the dad about 8 a.m. would take pickles out to take a shit. And, um, you know, she's looking way too long. But I always stop and go, I can't judge her taking too long to look for the perfect poo spot because I've definitely been driving through like fucking, you know, Palm Springs looking for the cleanest Arby's to drop a deuce, you know? So it's like, I get it when you're trying to like find the exact right spot, you know? But so this guy walks by with his kids and Pickles jumps up and, and I always give a little slack on the leash to make sure to see if the person's cool with the dog, right? To not just assume, hey, let my dog jump on you. So I'm kind of pulling away and one of the kids reaches to pet her and so I give a little slack and then she kind of jumps up. By the way, again, 10 pound little cavaboo jumps up on the kid to kind of like, you know, get some pets and some licks and the kid freaks out like it was a fucking hippopotamus and pins herself against the wall and goes, dad, ah! and I was like, whoa, I go, definitely not the right reaction right now. I go a little too early for that. And the dad goes, hey man, control your dog. And I go, control my poodle, like my cavapoo. I go, I'm so sorry. I, I go, yeah, man, for sure. I definitely thought your kids wanted a piece of that pet. Like I'll pull her back. I go, also, Maybe I go, maybe teach your kids to not be afraid of tiny dogs. And then he was like, what? I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know what's happening. But like, she's all about love and maybe, you know, but I just, there's never, there should never be, I don't know, any sort of negative, you know, uh, energy coming towards tiny dogs. What are they going to do? <laughs> like, have your poodles uh, ever given you any, like, uh, they're not picking fights, are they? No, no, that dog's great. They're great. All love. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the true, when you come home and your dog, like, just go, like, uh, is... It's unexplainable. Are you a cat guy? No. Me neither. Fuck, I knew we were buds, dude. Fuck cats. I, I, mean, I mean, look. I, look, I don't mind them. I don't mind them at all, but they don't bother me. I, uh, they don't bother you. They just don't. I would rather have a tiger for a pet than a house cat. And I know that some of you are like, that's a lot more maintenance. And hey, do you have tiger money? No, I do not. Um, doesn't Tyson have pet tigers? Somebody has pet tigers. I think he. I think he used to. If he doesn't still, Six sure and Roy, I know did. <sighs> right? Yeah, but didn't one of them get eaten by a tiger? Uh, I think so. Yes. <laughs> we got yes, people in the room, was, uh... but everyone's fucking on Bumble. Um, <laughs> uh, is um, is there something about uh, uh, fighting now that you like when you're watching? You'll casually watch most matches now, right? Yeah. And, and obviously, we're yeah. going to break down once things get going. We're going to really get into breaking down and previewing uh, the weekend matches. But when you're watching, is can you watch casually now? Or do you... Yeah, I've always been able to watch casually. Now, I, I tell people, like, like they ask me like, to break down fights. I have to rewatch the fight. Totally. Because I watch it. If I'm breaking a fight down or, or like, trying to coach a fight or try to, trying to... Uh, do homework for someone yeah. to watch. If I, I have to, I'm watching it differently. I'm really kind of watching how's he setting them up. What's what's what are how's he reacting to this? How's he react to that? Because those little things are more important to me than than how the fit finishes and yeah. how. Because there's there's always circumstances. There's things that happen. There's always things that happen that can make a fight more interesting, more not. I'm usually if I don't know the guys, I'm usually just cheering for action. Totally. I just want guys trying Love to finish that. a fight. Like I don't care. I don't care how they finish it. I don't care if you're a submission guy. I don't care if you're a ground and pound guy or a stand up guy. I just like guys trying to finish. So if if, if guys, I'm looking for guys to start working to finish. And and I, and I'm just I'm a fight fan. I just like watching guys that can fight. And do you always want to go the distance? Are you like do no? You, do you enjoy I, it? Yeah. I, no, of course not. No, uh, no I. I it, when you when both guys are selling out, but I, I don't mind it going the distance. If both guys are trying to are try, trying to finish it. As long as they're not, no one's dancing around trying to, to eke out a win, um, I'm okay with it. If they're still just fucking they're kicking and screaming it, at the end. Yeah, if they're still going after it, I, I, I enjoy it. What is that exhaustion level like at the end when you truly, the tank is beyond empty and you have to find that next like, uh, tank? I mean, to, that's hard. To, you can't really explain that. No. But I mean, that's, and then and some guy, but it's like everyone says, you know, that if that will to win's there, you know, it's like, you, you got to deep down. Sometimes you got to dig down deep and find it, you know, but you know, some, there are times yeah, I've seen guys like, look, like, man, he's, and I know guys that are just all heart, all, all balls, no, no quit in them. They yeah. just don't have enough left. Like the muscles are done. They, yeah. They, they, they would either error in training or they just, Hey man, they sold out and, and, and it's done. It's over. Like, I, you know, I see guys, Oh man, he's got one right. He can still knock him out. I'm going, Wait, he's throwing punches right now? Nope. 
no shot. Oh, you can even, tell. Even if he even if he lands it, it's not gonna be hard enough to hurt the guy. But there's other guys that, and that was always the goal as a as a conditioning coach or as, as a coach or as as a fighter. Mm. I want to be in good enough shape that you can beat me up for four rounds and four and a half minutes in the fifth round. And if I still, if I catch you in that last 30 minutes on the chin, you're going out. Um, and, and that, that was always the goal yeah. in, in my strength and conditioning. Like, well, I, I want explosive, explosive strength over time. Yeah. Yeah. So I want, and I always want to be, and I've seen fights like, like, um, like the Khabib, uh, Connor fight. Yeah. Khabib did Everything I mean, Connor did everything he needed to do to win that fight to, against Khabib. Yeah, in the first two rounds, he survived them, and did, and he survived, survived those rounds. He yeah, survived for sure. and got up. And Khabib was a little tired in the third round. He came out and was taking a little time off, and that was when Connor needed to be able to jump on him and knock him out. Totally. If and if I think if Connor at that point had had that had that still in him if he still had that snap he normally he could have, have right seized that moment huh he could have he had it he would that would have been his shot to beat oh, him man. now i'm not saying he would have i'm not gonna I make predictions because we don't know what would happen sure but he but I, all i can say is in the third round he didn't have enough left it was over he it used it all in the first two yeah he, he used it all in maintain. the first two to survive now that's that's because of how how ruthless and yeah. how how much pressure could be puts on someone when he's on top of him yeah but it is what it is, you know that he, you know, it, he if he had been able to get through that now, and I don't know if he could, but if he was able to get through that without being tired and still had that snap in the third round, I think he would have had a shot at winning that fight. And there's not something you can do or not do in training that is going to allow you to foresee like, like kind of. There's nothing you could go back and go, oh, if he had done a little more weight on these reps or a little taking well, a day off, maybe he would have been more rested in that third round. Well, well it, you know, it's. it's yeah, it's it's hard to tell. It's hard to you can go back and try to figure it out. I mean, there's, you could you could go back and look at what you did and, and and figure out what you did wrong and 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 work on some things that could make a difference. Um, but I don't know. That, yeah. Would it make it? That doesn't say that he can do it again. And was he gonna make it through those two rounds? He's gonna, you know, it doesn't make a you see, fight. But you see, a, yeah, you see the metrics and the the training, especially in football players. I'll watch on those sports science, uh, no. you know, um, programs they'll do where they really break down. The intricacies of like, you know, putting in uh, like this many calories and this many things. And if you, and you know, they they hook your body up to everything to where they're like, all right, cool. Moving your muscle this way or moving this exhaust your body more. If you do that move, you know, that can truly break it down. But I don't know how much of that you're factoring in when you truly step in. Are you throwing that all away and just being like, now I just have to trust on my laurels and what I've prepped for and just well, that, react. Okay. There's, there's a lot to be said with that. I mean, it's a little, that's a little complicated, but like, as far as I'm concerned, a lot, there's a lot of science to what they do, what I teach you and what I'm doing for you. If yeah. I, as I'm a strength coach, say I'm a strength coach. There's a lot of science on what I do and how I'm working. And there's a lot of science that I need to know and things I need to know to, to, to work with you yeah. and get you where you need to be. Yeah. It's my job to get you where you need to be. You, you're not thinking about how I trained you or this, that strength or that strength. I, you're just you're going to go out and fight the way you fight, and I, I need to know what that is. And I need it's my job to get you in. If as a, as a strength coach, my job, a strength and conditioning coach, it's my job to get you there in in the shape to be able to fight the way you fight, right? For as long as you need to, right? And that and that's and that's where my, I think this the strength and conditioning coach's um, job is is to get you in the shape to be able to do fight for those five rounds any way you want to, or the way you, you normally do or the way you fight. Yeah. How far would you say I am from a fight? Just from sizing me up, just from when I came in here today. Adam, 6'1", six, 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 198. You know. oh, I think you can fight tomorrow. I got a guy for you. <laughs> for real? Yeah, I got a guy for you. You got a guy, wait, wait, you got a guy to train me, or you got a guy that would fight me? I'm going to fight you. Now, just for shits and giggles, what does this guy weigh? Whatever, whatever weight you want. Has he fought you before? Pick. <laughs> you pick. <laughs> oh, man. He's fought before, yeah. How quickly, legit How question, long will you last? How quick, well, how, how long, long would you... I last? I mean, like, hope, you know. How, how, I would love to, I would love to think I could last 60 seconds. No. But <laughs> Absolutely not. With a, with a true not pro. Is that what we're not, saying? Not a chance. Put me up against a guy who's just training right now who's not yet made it to the big dance. Not yet, not even chance, not a chance. You what made, would he be a the, contender? 
I, what, what do you want him to do? I, you tell me what you want. Do you want him to take, oh, take you down? And, choice. And, 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 do you want him to take you down and submit you? Or do you want him to put, knock you out? All right, now, I, now, the one thing, one caveat with that is I, I don't know how what kind of punch you can take. Totally. Because, like, you know, you might be able to take... Um, uh, well, I don't uh, wince when I get my when I get shots. I don't make a face. I'm just well, like this. Yeah, but um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that I, I just I've taken a couple hits, got back up in the two fights I've been in. One was in Austria, uh, and it was in a big street fight. Probably 15 people just throwing haymakers. Threw one, then turned around, got hit, went down, got up, threw another one, got hit again, and then we all dispersed. But uh, it was an adrenaline rush, and I definitely wanted to go back into the streets and keep throwing. But then, you know, then the pain settles in, then the bruise, then the fucking, you got your chip yeah. teeth, and you're like, yeah. all right, yeah. if I do want to try to well, be a movie someday. Yeah, no. No, but it, it, it's not, no, that's nothing against you. Like, but it's a, you're talking about trained fighters and a guy that's never fought before. You're built for right, it. You know, right. Not, not you're built, no, I'm not saying, I, I, have, I don't know what kind of athlete you are. I don't know what kind of training. Yeah. I, I tell you, give me somebody... Enough. Give me somebody with athletic ability, and give me enough time. I, I you know, yeah. and 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 you know, I, I mean, I would like a guy that's mentally tough, that which is kind of some mental, some mental toughness. Yeah, so, I got that. Right? With all those all those things, and I think anybody that's really good at what they do has has a, has a form of mental toughness. They, discipline, right? Discipline. It's a form of discipline to be able to be great at what you do. You have to have discipline. Hmm. So to have that, if you have that discipline and athletic ability, and you give me enough time. And the, the one caveat is, can you take a punch? Because you, because I've I've met people like that. You hit them with a jab, and they're like sideways. Oh <laughs> shit! So everything so, else is they've I, checked I, all I, the I, other boxes, I, but they can't but, take but a I punch. Can, if you can't, if you can't hit, get hit, if you if you get hit with a jab and you fall down, yeah, it's not gonna last very long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but for the most part, you know, like you give me all that, I, give me enough time, I, I can teach anyone to be a fighter. Like oh. if, if they have if they have all that, but those those little things, I can't give you athletic ability. I can't. I'm not willing to take the time to teach you to, to be disciplined. Yeah. If you're not disciplined, I, I'm not going to chase you around and teach you how to be disciplined. So there's certain things you got to come in, bring into the table to allow you to help construct and mold into a, yeah. a fighter. And then yeah. you can, but, but in that, you know, and I'll joke around because, Oh man, how, you think I could do against a fighter? Like you've never fought before. Totally. Pro- don't, don't, don't discount what a, a professional yeah. fighter is by yeah. saying you can, you can go, go beat him. Yeah. Like, no, you're not going to beat him at what he does. You know, it's not going to happen. Do you, uh, that is interesting you say that too, because, well, look, I took a high heel shoe to the middle of the back for my sister when I was 12. I don't know how that translates to taking a foot to the face. Probably doesn't. Probably not. No, 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 no. <laughs> By the way, the kick is maybe my favorite move. Oh, but, but yeah, there's not many people who take a kick to the face and, and, and still be, still be there. And so still be able to that, say that, their that, ABCs. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that doesn't necessarily put you out. Not being able to take a kick to the face, uh, clean kick to the face, and, and not being able to stand up, that's not necessarily going to disqualify you from being a fighter. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, good. What does that feel like, by the way? When you fucking connect, is it almost like the same way like a baseball player hits the ball I, in the sweet I'd say spot? The same thing. It's like it's the same thing. You hit it just like you hit nothing. Bang! Just, hit guys like that. Just, they drop straight down. And are you <laughs> aiming for a certain spot? Like, I mean, I'd like to get. You're I, like, all right. I if like I hit him there, they'll forget math. If I forget him there, no, I, but I'm certain, just trying to know, get him across probably, the chin. Yeah. I mean, I I I, I try to put my chin, my cause if I can get them, if I get their head to twist, it's a little even better than hitting the side. But with that. With a shin, I don't really care. If I kick anywhere in, in center mass. Yeah. Uh, good night. <laughs> center mass hit with a shin, it's, you're not going to be feeling too good. <laughs> yeah. That's probably a headache that lingers. It might. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. God damn. Um, how do you feel about, you know, you see like Nate Robinson uh, jumping in and Logan Paul, that type of stuff. How do you view people that are, like we were talking about before the show, um, you know, like actors who are now jumping into stand up. And, uh, and making some headway. And I'm curious in well, your world. Okay. What, how... I, I don't know how you feel, but I mean, if they're entertaining and people want to pay to see them, yes. who cares? That, I'm like, a thousand percent I, on board I'm with not, that. I'm not, I'm not mad at you. Yeah. If, if you want to, I don't want, do I want to watch uh, Logan Paul fight? And Nate Rob, yeah. And Nate Rob, not really. Yeah. I don't really care, dude, but yeah. I mean. You're not watching actually, the best I, of the I, best, I, right? I, I mean, I like to watch guys that can fight fight. Yeah. You know, like guys that are like, you know, I watched the Tyson fight, you know, so I did see it, you know, I saw that and I, I, it was, 
I, it was worth it to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I liked it. I had a good time. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, I didn't expect much. I wasn't expecting, you know, I was hoping, I was, I was hoping they're going to get after it a little more at the end, but yeah. I, I mean, it, but you know, I, I'm not, I'm not mad at them either. Go like they, it, right? they, you know, they went out, they, they went out and they, they performed, they, they went after it. Um, you know, and, and these other guys, like, you know, they got, what's, uh, is it, uh, the Jake Paul? Logan Paul. Who's? No, no. Who's going to fight, um, Ben Askren. Who is that? It's Jake? Jake Paul. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that one's coming up. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, and it makes sense. He picked, uh, one of the, probably a guy that's not known for his striking in, yeah. in MMA to yeah. be a fight MMA guy. Yeah. Right. And Which Logan's going to fight Floyd, right? But, yeah. But I don't think that's going to be, you know, um, you know, I don't think, I, I don't think Ben's going to be as easy as, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Jake, Jake was hoping for a thousand percent. Yeah, because I mean, because oh, he got oh, yeah, knocked out really, he's running, uh, um, running across the ring, but that's a flying knee. And if you know, I don't know if you, you I don't know anything about wrestling, but those guys that at Ben Ashton's level, when they shoot in on you, that it's like you're getting hit by it. You hit by you get, I mean, that 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 shot's real hard. Oh, they, they they have great pre, they have great explosion in their in their shots. So he's running across the ring and hitting that explosion straight at Mazzaball. And Mazzaball's coming running at him, throwing wow. a flying knee. That's a lot <laughs> of force. <laughs> yeah. The, the, between that shot coming in and the knee cut flying knee coming the other way. That's a lot of force meeting each other. That's some lunatic right shit. Edge, yeah, at his chin, and so him getting knocked out there doesn't mean he's going to be easy to knock out, right? So, because I mean, he did fight um, Robbie Lawler, and Robbie rocked him a little bit, but he still didn't go down. And Robbie hits like a truck too. He does, huh? Robbie, Robbie, Robbie's got got he's got he's got ambles, man. That guy throws some punches, and um, and he and he was and Ben was able to survive that, so. I don't think uh, I don't think Jake's gonna have as easy time as he yeah, thinks to knock yeah, yeah. out knocking out Ben. But you're right; it'll be entertainment, and people want to see. It. But, but people but know he going in. The guy, he, he picked the guy. He picked the guy that he probably thinks he can knock out. Yeah. He's not a great boxing guy. He's not a great striker. He's a wrestler. So his background's in wrestling. Most of his stuff's wrestling. Yeah. He wins by wrestling. Yeah. Um, so he picked him to box. Got it. That makes sense. But he's got to now. He's got to remember this guy. He's a, he's, a, he's World class athlete, he's going to be in shape. He's going to, so it, it will be interesting to see how how if, if Jake's able to to do it. He thinks he can knock him out. I'd be interested to see that. Can you tell by the way someone enters the ring, or even in their prep, or seeing them at the? And, uh, and the other thing too, though, they, they got to remember, like some of these wrestlers that don't box, they don't have a great straight right usually, and they don't have a great jab. Yeah, but they usually have a pretty goddamn good hook. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you know, those guys because they have such good core power they core body strength ah, they, they, everything they, they twist it. they they get that twist behind it they, they catch you if he catches him with that you might not like it yeah i was gonna say like are there certain guys that have like and they're and they're unorthodox they're not they're not even if, if you're used to boxing guys are normal boxing guys yeah they're they're not going to come at you that way their, their punches are not going to come at you in the same manner yeah. you're used to yeah yeah they're going to come at you in a weird way. How many moves would you say you need, like, you know, in a, you know, comedy wise, you know, you need, uh, you know, uh, obviously like an, uh, a good opener, you need a good closer, right? Like you, um, if, especially if you're doing an hour set um, and then some good stories in between, you need um, certain things you, you need. You also need like, you know, obviously good timing, good delivery. There's technical things, but for a fighter, like it, is there on paper, you're like, all right, you need three solid moves well, at this juncture of the fight or you that, need it's all different for that but, but the one thing like once you get to the top end of the sport you need a basic um basic grasp and ability in you know uh, jiu-jitsu yeah ground or whatever you want to call it for ground fighting um any there's a lot of different things you can, you can call for me it was so, white belt and taekwondo uh, right yeah. that was the belt you, you they need, give you when you sign up you, by you the need way. stand up yeah uh, you need like stamina, kick box. No, no stand up. Stand up, kick box, kickboxing, striking, oh, yeah, yeah. boxing, any kind of striking, okay. kickboxing, uh, karate. I don't care what it is. You need something good up there, and you have to, and you need some some kind of wrestling, take down defense, right. take down right. takedowns. Of that that so all those three those three categories you need you need to be 
fairly proficient at, at least at a, a basic level. And then you need to be, if you really want to be, be good, you need to excel at at least one of them hmm. really well. You need to be really good at one of them, um, hopefully two. Yeah. But but like to, to do really good in the sport eventually, to get at that top level, that's, that's what you need. To get to that top level and maybe get to the UFC Hall of Fame, which has, I mean, which you're fucking in, which is incredible. Thank you. Yeah, you're yeah, you're so humble. I mean, that's a crazy the Hall of Fame Look, for. Man, I fought for a living, man. I got I got to do I got to, I got paid to do. What I love for a living. I'm I'm a good man. I'm a, I'm a blessed man. Uh, what was that whole? We've never talked about that. I don't know how uh, candidly you've spoken about it, but is that as um, crazy of a moment as you know? You see, for musicians when they get into the Europe Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or. Or even baseball players, right? When that comes around and they get that call, it's like always super emotional because I think it's, I don't know if it's something that you're playing for or is it, does it become a, something in your, uh, your, your eye line once you get to a certain point in your career? Or? I don't, I, I never cared. Like, I, I mean, it really wasn't, I mean, it's, it's more, that's more like, that's something fans say, that's something people give you an award. I'm, I'm happy I got it. I mean, I think I deserved it. I earned it. Um, but, you know, I would have been okay without it too. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not I mean, it would I wouldn't have cried over someone. I would have been complaining yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Like you know. That clip would go viral by the way. If there was a clip of <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They cut to you crying after not getting it. Yeah. Uh was there a big ceremony? Did you go? Was it like yeah, a, a ceremony? Whole... Yeah, it was uh, uh, I think it was UFC one hundred if I remember correctly. Oh wow. Yeah. Where was that? Uh Vegas. Wow. It was, was it special. Was, I mean, was it, it, it was cool. It was awesome. Yeah, but they do like a whole like video montage of you, and then yeah. like have a whole. Did, who who a, presented little, you? It was a. I mean, it was a little. Uh, you know, because that was right after Mask died. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And oh, it was yeah. a little weird moment for me because I, sure. you know, because I, um, you know, we, we were really close. Yeah, and uh, and it was like kind of I was. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of kind of emotionally. I was like kind of like I was this a little weird. Totally. Uh, you know, he's not here. Yeah. You know, like one of those, like, yeah. Like, should be there. Should be there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, I mean, it was, it, so that, that made it a little weird for me, I think, too. Yeah. So I think it, I kind of push it. Like, it was like, okay. It's right. Kinda, just that yeah. moment just comes yeah. and goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a tattoo that I've been meaning to ask you what it means since we met, and I haven't. And it's a tattoo on your head. Yeah. Yeah. What about it? I want a tattoo. I don't know where to get it. I'm 38. I'm tattooless. I don't know if I can get a tramp stamp or a fucking face tat. You for sure a tramp stamp. That's what you need. You need a tramp stamp. I An icebreaker's tramp stamp. That's yeah. Fine. If I truly want to show some commitment to this podcast. Can you throw some wings on that too? <laughs> <laughs> the wings always tie it together. I mean, yeah. There's. I remember the first time I heard about a tramp stamp and then saw one live. And it might have even been just a fucking grocery store, and I saw some mom bending down to pick up some beef jerky off the floor, and I just saw this. Why just, was it beef jerky? I don't know, man. It was fucking. <laughs> she had a bunch of jerky. She dropped it. She was picking up the beef, and she bent down. I remember just, you know, I think I was at around that age too when the fucking, you know, the emotions are running hot. I'm 13, 14. Every I'm starting to just be like, holy shit, you know, boobs are are not just for milk, and so it's like, you know, I, I see this mom bend down, and I see this this tattoo. And I was just like, holy shit. And my buddy was like, oh, that's a tramp stamp. And I was like, what is that? And he was like, that's a fucking, that means she's like down to party. And I was like, there's like a sign, there's like a bad sign for that. Like, I thought that was her like, sim- it's like, yeah, you see that? That means she's like, has a good time and, and it's, you know, real promiscuous and whatever. And then, uh, and then I get home and I see my mom's got one and I'm like, wait a second. No, I'm joking. But um, <laughs> uh, by the way, how was I made? No, but uh, okay. So there's this tramp stamp for a guy. How much stock goes into a tattoo when you got it? Were you always like it's going on the dome? Uh, no. Um, it well, you know, some it depends on the guy, I guess. Because I mean, those guys are like, I'll take number eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> like it's I fucking guess, like Wendy's. Really? Like, <laughs> yeah. um, well, for me, it, it was um, I, when I started kickboxing. They were stripping me of my my black belt, my old karate school. Yeah, and um, and. Or the not the school the their whatever the national thing they said I was bastardizing the art okay basically with kickboxing and they were stripping me on my black belt and I mean it was just a political thing I don't, it was really funny but but to me like I was like okay so when I was in school to be an accountant 
you know, yeah. eventually I was going to, I was still planning on eventually getting a job yeah. being an accountant at that point. And so I, this is what we wear in our, our geese when you get a black belt in, in Koi Con. It says Koi Con. And that's what we wear in a gi. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you switch from, when you get your black belt, you switch from your gym patch. Okay. So I'd have like, you know, like Santa Barbara Koi Con yeah, yeah. patch. You switch from that to, to this is on your gi. Because you're a black belt in Koi Con. Yeah. Um, and so we're all, so when they stripped me, I wanted to put it somewhere where you could see it without me taking my shirt off. Okay. And, but I wanted to be able to cover it up real easy um, when I went to go get a real job. Because, you know, uh, yeah. like an accounting firm was probably not looking for the guy with tattoos, especially back then. Oh, no. So I'd had a Mohawk for, for a little bit. And I'm like, you know what? I asked, I asked someone, that, oh, we don't do them on the head. And then I'll do them. I was talking to another buddy of mine. My buddy will do it on your head. No problem. It's not perfect. So I went down and got it done in my head. Wow. And that was, it was kind of an F you to them yeah. uh, at the time. And, you know, I earned it. You can't take it from me. Yeah. It's kind of how I felt about it. And I, and I went with it. And, um, and then, you know, I mean, and then I, I got famous and they forgot. That they stripped me. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah they forgot. <laughs> but you know, and I and I don't care. Like, all oh, you you care? Like, no. I mean, if they I, I, anybody who's got a Koi Con school wants to tell them that I trained in Koi Con, I was going okay, Go great because yeah. I'm open. Cause those guys didn't strip me. Yeah, some high up guy it wasn't the guy trying Damn. to make a living. You know, making it run a karate school. And all those guys are cool. I I I still have friends with a lot of guys that have. Was the guy who stripped you? Was he was he the neighbor that did, didn't get invited to the kids' birthday party? Because maybe, like <laughs> maybe, maybe he knew him. Maybe he knew him. These I guys got some fucking. I'm like, well, I mean, really, like, I mean, I, and and that was like one of the things that I, I think is funny because I, like mixed martial arts, yeah. I think the UFC really did a, did a did justice to martial arts in general, in my in my, in my opinion, because it forces them to change and to evolve yeah. and add groundwork and add learning how to take care of guys that are going to take you down. Yeah. Um, they force, cause like, I was like, why, why is it bastardizing the art? Like, but Isu, Isu and Ishii started this from three styles that he trained in and he made them to get, put them together and it made it koi -Kan. And so why should we stop then and stop evolving till now right. and not keep evolving. We should keep getting better, right? Yeah. It, it, and, and stuff changes. Like the way you may, I mean, I don't know how much it changes, but the way you fight at one time is going to change over, you know, natural time. progression. Yeah, right? Natural prog progression. Now, like before, you never had to really worry about it. If you worried about it, you had to worry about wrestlers taking you down yeah. and ground the pound kind of thing. Yeah. But they didn't know submissions. They didn't know most of them. They didn't know chokes most of them. You know? And then, so you, you could get away with a lot of other other things, you know? It's just, now now you you, you got to worry about whether or not a guy has, knows how to do, uh, you know, leg locks or the guy's got to do submissions. You're gonna, you know, if you take some guy down, you don't know which guys can fight. No. There's yeah. a lot more to be concerned about now yeah. versus when you were fighting, yeah? When I was growing up as a kid, you yeah. know, you could almost tell who you could tell, look around and tell who you got to worry about fighting. Yeah, yeah. You know, now you don't know. Like I got some, some of my friends are some of the most unassuming guys. I got some funny stories where guys are like, "I don't want to mess with you, but I'm gonna kick his ass." I'm like, um, "You probably want to fight me instead." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna knock you out. He's gonna give you knee surgery. Oh like, man! I, pro I promise you, if he grabs a hold of your leg, you, he, you're gonna get knee surgery sometime. You're gonna be getting knee surgery next month, so yeah, it's a lot. you might want to just get knocked out. <laughs> just, just go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to just go to sleep, and so you wake up with a little headache, maybe. But wow! If you if you if you if you, if you keep messing with him, you're, you're gonna get knee surgery next month. <laughs> Those unassuming guys. It's are... like it's like I, like I, I'm like I, I'm, it's it's funny. I we used to work in the, behind the bars. I used to think I think it was the funniest thing. Gan McGee. Work with me at the bar, right? Is in San Luis Obispo. Yeah, in San Luis Obispo. He, he so you bartended for fought, how long again? He, uh, about eight years. Yeah. Eight, nine years. He he was <laughs> he's six ten, about two eighty five at the time. Uh, you know, Pac ten champ wrestler. Yeah. Fought in UFC. He fought for the, for a world title. He lost, but he he fought for the world title. We'd be out behind the bar, and it wasn't once, it wasn't twice, it's multiple times. Guys going, all right, so I, 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 I'm like, I don't want to mess with you, but I'm going to kick his ass. They're pointing at him. I'm going, <laughs> I started laughing. I'm like, 
you, you're gonna have to understand something. I'm not mean. Like yeah. him, yeah. You piss him off. You're gonna be picking your teeth up off the floor. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna jump on you and start beating you. Like, he, don't get him mad, all right? Please don't. <laughs> like, again, again, it's a big day bear, but but he's a good dude. But but you know, he well, push comes to shove, push right? Him, yeah, hey, um, again. I'm, I'm going to knock you out. He's going to beat you to death. Oh, <laughs> He's going to rip your arm off and hit, beat you with it. Like, Man. <laughs> but, I mean, just imagine a guy going, pointing at him. He's 6'10", yeah. 200. Would never point at no six. Pro- I, got, I got no problem with you, but I'm going to kick his ass. Yeah, dude. That's like, a fucking <laughs> big ball, Larry. And, and by the way, um, obviously, you don't watch TV very much. Watch, watch MMA enough. Because... <laughs> He yeah, to see like, what he does to people. You don't want to mess with him either. <laughs> like, By the way, like, that's that dude bar. You know, when guys are at bars and they get one too many cocktails, it's like there's an extra level of. Well, that was always walking. And the funny thing is, that those times were always walking out. Guys walking by the bar outside in the back. Like I'm like, you obviously you've been kicked out of somewhere, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had before you had, yeah, you had a few too many somewhere yeah. else, and you're yeah. walking by. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we get it. Yeah, <laughs> you, we get it. The night's not stop. going according to plan. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but you might not want to. Add insult to injury. Dude, let's try to pick <laughs> and mess another. with that guy. But that's what happens. Dudes kind of. I mean, I'm, I'm saving you. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm yeah. here. I'm, I'm, I'm here helping you yeah, out. I'm this your is... Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> Maybe don't mess with the big guy. Yeah. <laughs> but, not... <laughs> but again, we get so fucked up and then guys want to double down on that. Like, you know, and just roll the dice and be like, all right, I got kicked out of that bar. How can I make good on the night? Well, I'll fucking get into a fight. I'll kick somebody's ass. Then I'll feel good about getting kicked out. You know what I'm saying? There's some weird psychological like that bar didn't know how cool I was because they they would see that I just beat this guy up the amount of uh, bar fights you must have seen or been oh, a part the, of or prevented the, 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 the funniest stuff I you see too like I, 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 I saw a guy this guy was probably my size and he's and he's he, he's walking away and this guy about um, couldn't be been 150 pounds maybe soaking wet yeah uh, with rocks in his pockets maybe oh <laughs> but God. you know and he's well, my, for, he, Trying to, the guy's too just backing up away from the guy, walking away from the big guy. You're right. Leave me alone, like bro. I I don't want to mess with it. Stop. Just, yeah. I just, just let me leave. I'm trying to leave. Just, yeah. I just want to go home. Yeah. And then, no man, it's too late. Just keeps coming at him, starts running at him, and, and he hits him right in the face, right? <laughs> and the guy goes, drops him out cold. So right? the guy took the face. The punch. big guy took that face punch and goes. Whack. Did he even flinch? Was it like the no, movies no, where he, he kind of like... He hit him and he just, and just like, He <laughs> fired right back. Out. Like, you guys out. And the guy wakes up. How how long? Uh, it, it, he was up pretty quick. He, he got up a couple of seconds. Yeah. He, he was out for about five, ten seconds. Okay. Got up. He's like... Looking for the... Co- hey, this guy hit me. Like, I'm like the cops are like, trying to talk to him. I'm like... I'm like hey, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, it's a waste. Come here. Yeah. Here's what happened. I, I told him... I, yeah, uh, this is what happened. This is what, and he's also that guy. Just let it go. Yeah. And they're, but then they're my friends, and they're like, "Okay, we got you. Cool. <laughs> it's cool. cool." You probably had cachet with those guys too. Yeah, from just well, trying. To they trained in my gym, like most of them, so, and they're friends. Of, they're just friends of mine. Yeah, you know, like and and they know they know me. Like I, I'm not causing any trouble, and we're, they're not doing the other. Oh, we had one. Oh, dude, you can laugh at this one. So please, my um, my buddy. So we're we're in college. And um, and would you go to school again? Up uh, Cal Poly. That's right. South yeah. And you know, and my buddy, a Pac-10 champ wrestler, tough guy. He yeah. actually he fought a little MMA and kickboxing. He was undefeated actually, both. But um, just kind of got burnt out. Like, yeah, he got burnt out. Yeah, he just stopped doing stuff. But he was my training partner for for years. It's probably one of my top sparring partners. Wow. But um, so he's in the middle of. His these guys are talking to that, and I see it happening, about to happen, because I'm I've been in a lot of street fights. He ne- he really never got much. He'd never been in many. So, he, but he, and this guy's going, "Oh no, I got no problem with you." And, um, I'm like, "Oh, I mean, I found he was in slow motion." No, <laughs> <laughs> winds up, and just tags him right in the freaking head, right right in the face. He goes like this. <laughs> oh, grab the guy, <laughs> dude, the guy. The guy's expression. When when he hit the guy, when he did one, he hit the guy right, hit him right in the face, and he goes, grabs him by, grabs him by his shoulders, and his head butts him in the head, butts him, he goes down right. Holy shit! 
So, and, and he didn't remember getting punched in the face because he, he got hit hard. Yeah. But he didn't. But we, so I, we start we start walking off, right? We start leaving. We're, okay, we're out of here. We're going to leave this guy. He's out. We By left. the way, a live headbutt is worth the price of admission. Oh, oh That's yeah. a fucking power. He, he gave right? him two. Uh, he gave him one and then oh, followed holy it up. Shit, oh, shit, dude. Shit. So, anyway, so we keep walking up and then we turn the corner and then the cops come up and like he's coming up with the cops. Yeah. He's running up. And the cops, okay, so what happened? I punched that guy in the face, and then he and we're whoa, 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 time out, time out. Yeah, Did yeah. you just say you punched him in the face? So you started it. So, he goes, turns to me, and, Chuck. You guys can go. I was, we're, we're good. Wow. <laughs> turns around, yeah. Self defense. You, you, you open with, I punched him in the face, <laughs> like, like I. So look, <laughs> I was trying to kill him, right? And he was trying to like so not I, die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. punched him in the face, and he hit me back. I'm like, yeah, like you. Like, like, you hey, understand where, where how did you, dumb how, that sounds. <laughs> how do you like? Like, I'm glad you're stupid, but yeah. like, well, how do you? How do you go? How do you tell the cop? The cop like looking. I'm like, yeah. The cop's like, wait, wait, wait. wait. Are you just wait, giving wait. me all the info I need right now? <laughs> Truly, you just say that. Like, um, yeah. sorry. Okay, Probably guys. sorry. I stopped you guys. Have a good night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, man. I, I knew the guy too, but but still, like he was like. Okay, guys, like, you can't, can't just walk off and okay, because we stopped. We didn't yeah. think I didn't think we did anything wrong. It's so funny you say too. You could see it coming, like him not being in a street fight. Like there's probably cues to pick up on, right? Like when you well, can see. You guys. know, the funny thing is, my grandpa used to teach me that stuff. Like he's from Brooklyn. Uh, grew up, was, grew up, grew up, a, grew up a rough, rough, rough kid, rough cat, rough kid. You know, like grew up fighting, and um, and he'd always be like, you know what, hey. When you do that spinning back fist, you know what you can do? So you can just go, hey, man, you know, you've got, got four guys or whatever coming up on you. You need to you need to get a good one in first. Yeah, you know, decide you want to just go, hey, just turn around and go, hey, I got no problem. And, and do that spinning back fist <laughs> and spin and hit him. Like, he's like, that was his, his creative spin stuff teaching me. Hit him. He's, he's, the creative stuff he was giving me to fight people in the street. Wow. You know, it's funny, but. Would he ever yeah, give you this? This is creative, the whole like. Hey, what's that? And then they turn, and then they turn back, and then you hit them? Or is that like... He never did that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. He never gave me that one, because that one seems yeah. a little basic. What's that? Yeah. The look over there? Yeah. But actually, we, we funny thing you say that one. I got a good story Is that Celine that. I, got, I yeah. got a funny story for that one. Okay. So, um, me and a couple of my buddies, uh, uh, they used to fight. You know, they're, they're little guys. They're little guys that fight, like 135s. Yeah. We used to hang out with Scrappy. Them. Scrappy, but they, they they used to fight. No, they used to fight in the UFC, both of them, oh, both WC. Uh, um, and um, and we used to do a funny game. We had a game that we used to play. Like it'd be like, hey man, check that, check out over there. And if you, or you know, hey, look over there. And if you get them to look, when they came back, you slap them, right? And they used to think it was funny because they do it to me. Like, yeah. They they didn't get me as much as I got them because I was I'm good at that game. Yeah, Snipe. but they get me and they get me and they thought it was hilarious because you know, they think it was hilarious. People would just look like. Oh shit! That little guy just hit Chuck. <laughs> What's gonna oh, no. happen? What's, next? Gonna, happen? What's <laughs> he gonna do next? Yeah, yeah. Because you know, the, and like you see people like, and they thought, and the reactions from people I get from, and I used to think it was funny too. And yeah. The reactions you get from people like, "What's he gonna? Oh shit! What's he gonna?" Do? And I go, and I just start drinking my beer or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever. Probably and I barely think felt it's nothing it. Like, like, the, but then they're like confused. Like, wait, he, that guy just slapped them, and then <laughs> they just went back to doing what they were doing. What the hell is going on? <laughs> but um, we were playing that one night, and um. And Ian McCall, mm. I did to I did to Ian, and I had a few drinks yeah. that night, and yeah. um, so did, did, it, did it a little hard, <laughs> felt bad. But didn't I, know your I own hit strength. Him, hit him, he dropped. Oh shit! Like, oh shit! <laughs> get hey, up! Get up, man! Uh, uh, maybe we should stop playing that <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, uh, I think my Uber's here. It, yeah. lasted, it, lasted, it lasted for about six months, and then we stopped. We decided after that night, we're like, mm, <laughs> that game is maybe Chuck shouldn't yeah. be playing that game. Maybe Scrabble's um, a good game to play. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, what, what's that clip of you with the Australian guy and he wants to, uh, you slapped him right for uh, his show. What was it? It's not on YouTube. Um, a surfer guy. Him. No, I, I didn't stop. I, I, I did a punch with a glove. That, uh, slow, that? In slow mo. That That's one? right. Yeah. Oh, and then, um, he wanted to take a punch from you. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I mean, how hard did you go for it? Not hard. He, yeah. he asked me not to. Yeah, for sure. No, because that's straight up first, dangerous. The first truly... time, no, the first time we did that. Well, the first time it was from, um, yeah, what, what's it called? Uh, he was doing uh, Tony, Tony, the Tony Hawk show, or the one at uh, the Palms. Yeah, uh, uh, was that Tony Hawk show? No, maybe. Or there was, uh, 
it was one. Of, it was it was it was a, it, or was it Inked? I don't know. He was doing one of the shows. Yeah, at, at Palms did a bunch of shows. Yeah, the show and they're doing interviews, and he's like, and they asked me if I come. I'm walking through, and I think someone grabbed me like, "Hey, man, you, you want to do an interview real quick?" Like, yeah. I mean, I'm drinking. Yeah, you know, I'm, 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 I'm happy. You know, we're, yeah, you're we're in a good mood. I'm at the Palms. Yeah, so we're walking through, and uh, I get I get in there, and uh, and he comes up and he asks, he's like. Uh, hey man, you know let's do it. So he's doing it, and we're in there talking. And then he goes, "Hey, you, you want to hit? Would you, you hit me in the shoulder? I'm gonna see how hard you hit." I'm like, "No, <laughs> I'm not gonna hit you, man. I, you know, Come on, man, fuck me up. I've been drinking. I don't want to do that. And, and like, I don't, I don't like to play that game. I'm playing, yeah. You know, like." Oh, you hit me in the shoulder. Come on, come How do you on. Please, know he's not waiting please. to get no, sue you. No, that's not what I'm worried about. I just don't. Oh. I just I, yeah, I don't it's not fun. I'm not gonna do it. It's, it. Okay, and I finally finally get talked to. Him, and I go. Um, I go, okay. All right. Was okay. he being so uh, annoying that you actually generally well, no, wanted I'm to like, hit him? No, I, no. But, I, <laughs> yeah, I, but, yeah. but I'm like, okay, I'll hit you. So I just, I, you know, give him a little, little tap, right? Well, that didn't look like a tap. And, and then he goes, oh, is that all you got? And oh, I'm like, Jesus. Like, I don't remember exactly what he said. He said something to that effect, and we're on TV. I want to, we're being filmed. I'm like, you know what? Can I hit you one more time? Yeah, sure. Why not? Boom, we watch you look it up. I slid underneath the table. <laughs> I got how I, like, good did that make, feel? And so we were at the I'm just laughing. I'm yeah, like, dude. Um he was actually um hosted went to the Tony Tony Hawk's uh charity event. Yeah, yeah. Like uh stand up for state park yeah. skate parks back in the day. Um went, went to uh went to that right after and he was ho- like a week later and he was actually the the, the host? The, the, the host. Hilarious. He's a, Chuck. Yeah. Why <laughs> did you hit me? Why did you do that? I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Hey man, you were egging me you, on. You asked. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. You asked, I delivered. <laughs> but it was it was funny. It was, it was awesome. You uh, you're wearing a shirt for your buddy's charity. Uh, speaking yeah. of charities, um, do you want to pimp, Jer- pimp uh, that out? Oh, uh, Jared Allen's home homes for wounded warriors. They build homes for. Damn, dude! Warriors. All over uh, the country. Um, I'm I'm not sure exactly yeah. where everywhere they go, but it's big time though. It's been going for a long time now, and they, they're doing they do a lot of good things. Charities that help, uh, you know. And like I, I tell the story, like the first time I was flying out, um, my buddy Alex Carlexis, who works for him, was a good buddy. He is calls me up and he's like, "Yeah, can you come out to the, the golf tournament?" Yeah. And I said, "I'm like, yeah, no problem." Uh, yeah, he said, "Well, what, what do you? What, well, they usually fly us out first class for that thing." And he says, "Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, Jared will do that, but just so you know, Jared pays all the." Um, all, all those expenses out of his pocket. Everything goes to the, everything made for this goes to the charity. It's not the charity. They're not, they're not thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, don't worry. Put me on Southwest, bro. I'll see you there. You know, but, you know, because my thing is like, usually, like a lot of these people, like you get charities come up and ask you to do stuff for them. Yeah. And, you know, I need to know how much is going back to the charity. Oh, yeah. Like how much, you know, because if you're asking me to take my time and do my stuff, like, is, is who's who's getting paid? Who's benefiting? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are, are you at, because a lot of the, a lot of the people, like, do charities that, oh, not not a whole lot of the money being made goes, Fuck yeah. actually makes it to Which the people or whatever they're trying to do. Yeah. And so I, I tend to try, like, for charity work, I try to do my homework. Mm. You know, like, I, what is, but he was my friend. I was going to do it anyway. But yeah. I, they, they, and they asked, I hadn't even decided make them up but he, I just told him that this is what they normally do yeah and and um, and he's like no I'm, uh, I'm not okay <laughs> yeah. I was Arizona anyway so yeah not, yeah, yeah, yeah. we should do an episode where you're decked out in Adam Ray merch and I'm decked out in Chuck Liddell merch just top to bottom and just pimp oh. each other's shit out I'm that's trying to pay off some parking right. tickets. I think you and some Adam Ray swag could really uh, <laughs> give me a couple <laughs> a couple sales um, Icebreakers 2 episode 2 in the can yeah, baby.